set out on a national tour to find dancers for the new Dance Theatre of Harlem Company. Uh, and we would have 75 people, we would have 110 people, we would have 50 people come to the audition because they were dancers who wanted to be part of Dance Theatre of Harlem. The unfortunate thing was that so few of them were dancers of color. And I really felt that the eight years that Dance Theatre of Harlem had not been on the stage was a real um, falling off of being able to look on the stage and see somebody who looked like you, mm -hmm. who, who gave you the idea that I do belong in this world. And there was, I, I think it also was throughout the classrooms that there were people, there were teachers who would say to, as they said to me, oh my dear, you're such a good dancer, you should be a modern dancer because there are no ba ballet companies that are gonna hire you. So I think there's a generation of dancers who were actually got, who, who should be ballet dancers now, who should have been auditioning for Dance Theatre of Harlem in 2012, but, but did not, because they were encouraged to go somewhere else because people couldn't see them, literally, mm -hmm. couldn't see them having a career in a ballet company. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a really missed connection, though, because I think that we want, when you look at an audience, uh, when you go to the Met or you go to, to, to I'm going to call it the State Theater, you, it's, mm -hmm. it's, not, mm -hmm. um, it's not a mixed audience. So it's not just that there, there are no dancers of color on the stage. The audience is pretty lily white, too. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's work to be done about what the, the perception of what this art form is mm -hmm. and how people relate to it. And I think that if we um, don't just put the focus on making sure that we make uh, diversity happen on the stage, but that we actually increase the diversity in the audience, mm -hmm. that we can make a much bigger change happen faster. Mm -hmm.